Hi folks, we need to finish up a few minor things on the ABOM 79 parking attachment, including throwing his logo on there and uh, a couple corrections. Let's dive in. So thank you very much to, I believe it was Ben's Ben's, uh, Ben Ben's for catching this, which is this dimension here is 1.625. I modeled it as the 1.625, then I added this boss above it, so it's wrong. So I really appreciate you guys catching me uh, on my mistake on that. Also a perfect example to show the beauty of parametric CAD. So all I think I've got to do is reduce this actually by the distance that of that boss, which we'll just check it right here. 0.1 inches. So I'll go back down here, right click on my sketch. See now, those are grayed out, super annoying. It's grayed out because it thinks you have something, I think it's because it thinks you have something selected. So if I go up here and drag a little box that deselects anything in my model, now it should work. Boom. So the easiest way to fix this, 1.625. I'm not even gonna do the math in my head. I'm just gonna say minus 0.1. And now if I hit I, I hit click here and here, boom. Now that dimension is 1.625 and that matches the dimension right there. Perfect. He, Adam showed the, uh, held the part up in SNS 119, which you can watch right here and take a look at it. And the one difference is this uh, boss down here was rounded on his. We modeled it as a circle, uh, straight line. Let's show how we would change that. Sometimes when I forget how something was modeled or I don't know, I, I rewind in my timeline here. So I'll just click here and drag this piece back and I'll stop somewhere maybe right here. So there I can see the boss was actually created from the get go like literally it was the first part. So it was created as part of this sketch. Uh, let's see it right here, flip it up that way. So that little guy right down here, that is that boss. No problem. Check that, that should be a two and a quarter inch radius. So here's what I'll do, I love this. I'll hit C for circle. Actually make sure I'm in my part, I'm not. Always wanna work in your component. So I'll activate this component and that is this part right here the only part, the only reason I have, um, well, I have multiple components here because if you watched our Rough and Ream series, I created the Rough and Ream test piece uh, in the same file because it makes it really easy to pull your tool recipe and cam stuff between two components. So I hit C for circle. It's gonna ask me what plane do I wanna work on. I click right here and I will snap a circle to there, see how it uh, match the two and a quarter inch radius. And honestly, I think that's all I needed to do. Um, hit Q for press pull. And well, if I drag this down, yeah, that's gonna let me drag it down. Um, we gotta get rid of that fillet. So let's do this, stop sketch. One of the really cool thing, like really cool things about Fusion 360 is, get rid of, turn this sketch off so you don't see it it has an ability to do what's called de-featuring. We did a, I know one video, which should be in a card right here that you can watch on, just amazing. If I click on this and I hit delete on my keyboard, of course it doesn't work right here. Usually it works, folks. Um, the idea is if you get, receive a file from somebody, you could um, remove things without having some of the CAD parametric information to it. I wonder if there's a way so, so there you go, that's kind of an example of de-featuring. Not what we wanted to do, but if we clicked this face and the fillet, we can remove that whole cutout. Anyways, no big deal. I can handle it by going back to the sketch and I will, do, I will, so it's a radius right now. I'll hit L for line and I'll just see here. So there's a good, this is a great example. I don't know how to get that line to snap exactly where I want it to. It might go, 
See, it's really easy to get that screwed up. So take a look. I'm gonna snap it as a cord. So I clicked, I already have it started on the first point. I'll just click a point right here. And you wouldn't know it, but that little uh, symbol right there is coincident. So that line is forced to be coincident. And actually, I've got to constrain this for now. There we go. So if I drag this point, you can see I can change that chord length. So all I need to do is also have it be, actually here, I'll click on the line, hold control and click here and right click. And I can now have a list of the options available. And I want it to be not collinear. Oh, you know what it is? I want that point in this line to be coincident. Perfect. See if that works. If I edit the extrusion, I can click, hold control, and click that little blip there, and it'll add it in. Um, so, let's see here. I think there's, probably, there's a lot of ways we can fix this. I'm trying to show you, I know this looks a little bit convoluted, but I'm trying to show you guys how you can fix things if you don't want to go back and delete the whole boss and just re extrude a circular piece. So we've got our circle here. If I can delete it. No, we'll still won't let me delete it. Negative point one two five. <laughs> there we go. Sort of what I was trying to show. So now that we extruded that down, we click on the two exposed faces here and hit the delete key, it removes them. I think that's pretty cool. So that models that correctly. The last thing I wanted to change is when Adam held up the part in SNS and he showed it off, um, I don't think there's as much of a straight walled section here. Uh, and I think I'd rather have this taper, uh, yeah, he got it on his drawing here. He called it a 10 degree taper and a 45. We're gonna tweak that a little to get it to be less of a straight walled section. So if I click on that, I can see that that's the revolve. So I'm guessing that the sketch prior to it was the sketch where I made that piece of geometry. Not there. Well, here we can just turn on. Did I accidentally put it up here, you goofball? I did. Oh, sorry. I, I goofed on there. Um, I put that sketch up here, which is my mistake. It's okay. We'll edit that sketch and you can see It'll be easier to turn our body off. So see, if we click this body light bulb, our body goes away. This straight section, I don't really want it. So he said it's 10 degrees and that's the OD. So what do I want to change? I could change this to be like 75 or 85. Oh, okay, so there we go. So let's just do 82. Eighty two point five. Stop sketch. Turn our body back on. Turn that sketch off. And now that straight walled section is way thinner, which should let that post uh, rock plenty uh, sufficiently. OK, let's throw the A-bomb logo on this thing. He also said we should put our logo on it, so we'll do that as well. But uh, Adam sent me the DXF file and it's right here. So right click. Insert into current design. And I want to rotate it. Oops, not that way. I'm going to activate the top level component. That way, when it comes in, it's its own component, not a subcomponent of this component. Mm -hmm. Right click, insert into current design. And I'm gonna rotate it so it's back on its 
side like so. And I'm just going to move it up for now. And yeah, we can try to kind of position it in place like so. So it's way too big. No worries. OK. We've got our logo. First thing, I'm going to break the link. So see, see how it's got this chain? It's linked back to the original DXF file. So if I right click and say break link, that goes away. Now, this isn't hard, but I will admit and hope that they come out with a little bit of an easier way to go through this process. Um, that being said, I still love this software. So hit Q for press pull. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a solid body out of this part. Before I do that, activate your component. Q for press pull, and I think I can just drag and select everything. That's way easier because then selecting individual things, because now if I hold down control, I can go deselect the few things that I don't want, like the center pockets and islands here. Like so. And we'll just extrude it up a quarter inch. Doesn't really matter how much. Oops, I missed the A. No big deal. Edit. There we go. And I missed the center of the... I thought it was hilarious when you guys saw that dimension back in the original uh, <laughs> CAD video on this. And you're like, it's right there, John. Um, oops. What's going on? No worries, I will pick it and just fix it this way. We have an O as its own body. That's because for something to be a single body, everything has to be touching. So the O is its own thing, no big deal. Now what I can do that since it's a body is it's easier to scale the size of it. So modify scale. I will hold down control as I pick the both things and we'll scale it to like say 0.4. And it looks good to me. I'm going to right click, move, and I'm going to use the little rectangle here to drag around. It's a little annoying that you see the bigger original sketch, but no, not the end of the world. And click OK. Now I moved it a little bit to the side because you're going to see in a second, you'll see, see why. Um, that's a little bit still too big though. So I'm going to edit the scale and we'll say 0.35. Okay, capture the position because I want, kind of want it to stay right there. Now check this out. So I still think this is really cool. We'll so activate the um, parking attachment part. Hit P for project. And I will click on the face that I want to project this thing onto. Okay, for some reason it puts me in a, puts me in a weird angle view. I want to go back to this home, sort of home view. What do we want to project? I want to project that. Oops, and the O. I gotta pick the O because it's a separate body. So that's really cool. It projects it onto the part, that plane. Now I wanna move it a little and see how they're purple. Uh, the fact those lines are purple is Fusion's way of telling you that they're sort of linked back to the uh, sort of that logo part floating in the sky that we made. So if I edit that sketch and drag a box around them, don't want this guy. I can right click and say break link. Should turn them all blue. Now that they're blue, I should be able to move them. So I'll drag a box around it. I don't want this guy. Right click, move. I can now move it to kind of position it where I want it. You could do this parametrically as well, but I think that's okay. And then take a look. We've got that ABOM logo on our part. I can hit Q for press pull and pick our two faces and say negative 0.05. How awesome is that? Um, we don't even need to go that deep. We're not going to when we engrave it. We'll just go down, say, um, 15 thou or something. Awesome. So I'll do my logo. It's the same process. And I think that was all the CAD changes that we needed to do. So if you guys want to see more on this, uh, let me know. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching. Thanks to Adam for, for letting us sort of work with him on this project. It was really fun. We certainly learned a, a lot. And we'll see you soon. Take care, folks.